So trust, I know how it is With all intentions to fuck I got in the rough night again I was doing good Had to take a whole nother L You'd rather lose a sack Instead of getting indicted for a sale I would never fail If this negativity I prevail We live in a good life At least we ain't worried about 12 When I parallel and further ahead I excel Everybody, y'all think real I look at them like squares Rejecting your comparisons Sink your man, I bury you Shape of your ship with my sort of dog bearers can carry you Rappers in the life they take. I made it in the hood. I can do anything it's your fail. Mama, thank you for them times that you paid my bail. If you knew you knew I wasn't gonna change, get out and raise hell. Now all these young cats coming up think they gangsta as hell. Not knowing that the life they living gon' have them dead and dead. They get you out your life right here, chasing a bag in these streets. Yeah, yeah. I seen it happen before, so I suggest that you take it from. Man, you can't start you let the business stick you keep pushing. So don't get you got your life out right here, chasing the bag in these streets. Yeah, yeah. Money, 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 yeah, you know we got to have it. Everybody got needs and everybody got to have it. Some of your hustles can't go ahead and choose one. Maybe two, maybe three. You need that income, but don't be out here hustling for pennies and selling them down. Don't be a fool out here committing ridiculous crimes. You got kids, you got family, man, they life on the line. Whatever the problem, come up, handle it like Tyson the Pride. You a teen black man, step up and prove that you won. She a queen black man, why don't we treat her like one? She ain't a dog black man, why do we beat her like one? I'm a stand for our unity, go hard till I'm done. You can't be asleep when it comes, gotta look out for the jail. Get out the butt for the crap, make a positive impact. That's rap on me, you know, man. How I grew up, we do hands. Stop listening to these rap songs and use your brain, young man. That repented and that changed their ways. I keep a toast on the feast day. Cause we don't celebrate holidays on heathen ways. I keep a toast on the feast day. I love that Passover lamb. I'ma clean the plate. Make sure the bread ain't got no leaven in it. Symbolizing, reminiscing of how we stopped sinning. So many different occasions, yeah, how we gave deliverance. Yeah, we remember the time, that's how we thanksgiving. We hold a feast of dedication, not no wicked Christmas. Need to research what you celebrate, it's paganistic. I'm in the spirit on the holy days, I feel terrific. Only a glass or two of wine, so I don't feel eccentric. I give a toast on the feast day. Eat good, drink good, let it replay. We bring it back to the holy days. Babylon, what we celebrate, the Lord's day. Toast on the feast day, eat that we drink, let it replay, bring it back to the holy day, Babylon, when we celebrate the Lord's day. Hey, you know ain't no false and blind nah. Then I go hard for mine So what you think when the feast is on the couch? And these three things so beautiful You know I'm with the, the family ways from before became a distant man Family reunion every week Yeah, this is for the sale How you love her, you don't keep the full command nah. Put down the things you did before Yeah, that's repent We put the fridges on our garments They can't stand uh, I'm like who fly to me Spirit get high in Like the Messiah trying to be I beyond power me to sit by the beat Seven month, ten day, I feel free my favorite feast tabernacle Supposed to tend to the wilderness for a week Make sure the ox got a bottle on ice I treat my brothers like myself With no worries for the more Today we live without a kill I praise the most high Let's have a toast Put your drinks in the hell Cause it's a righteous event I give a toast on the feast day Eat good, drink good, let it replay We bring it back to the holy day Babylon, what we celebrate the Lord's day I give a toast on the feast day 
Can't tell me nothing by life if you don't know pain. How you gonna try to coach if you don't know the game? You gonna get on the field and pick the wrong place. Instead of seeking help, you wanna do your own thing. A little way that you love me, love. That's why I'm giving you all of my love, girl. Thought I knew love, but you redefined it. Redefined it. Took me a while, but indeed I found it. Finally found it. Kisses and hugs keeping me reminded. Fake love in the past had me blinded. Still, you can't cancel me, cause I don't want Wake up my people and break the dream You just wanna do what you feel Yeah, yeah Cause you're living in the lust of your flesh Your fear of God is knowledge But fools despise instruction They need a Bible college for wisdom The Holy Spirit instructs me Sucklings need milk, they can't digest They can't digest and learn So they misinterpret John 316 Saying Christ died for all But everybody don't need saving Deliverance is the essence of our Salvation. Up on stage, I'm tripping. <laughs> Shalom, Shalom, Mark, Shalom, family. Shalom. I'm sitting up here, uh, sitting off stage, not even on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, all praise to the Most High, man. Call Allah, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Um. The water family for tuning in uh if you could if you haven't already go ahead and like the video share the video leave a comment let us know you here congregate with us all praise to the most high brother uh aaron if you want to you can go ahead and announce the topic the title come come for sure um first so i'll give all praises honor and glory to the most high whose name is yahweh and i'll do so in the name of his beloved son yahweh shai and the name of the topic is, will there really be salvation and good news for the nations? And um, I'll pass it back to you if you got anything. Con, con. Um, just, this is a very good topic um, that the brother's going into. Um, if you have anybody that you know may uh, have different uh, takes on this topic, make sure you share with them, um, share it to, the, to their inbox individually. And also we can use the highlight fe feature where we uh, hit the at button and we highlight, or you can add followers if you actually have followers on your uh, Facebook, if you have, have it in, on professional mode. So, you know, it makes sure that, that people get a, a, a alert to let them know that they're, they're highlighted in a comment or in a post. But yeah, brother, that's all I got. Con, con, yeah, I would echo the same sentiments. Um, Yeah, but uh, without anything further, Lock in one second. Calm, calm. But um, yeah, I would like like I said, I would echo the same sentiments. But um, without anything further, I'll jump into the lesson. You know, I'll say a uh, shalom family, and uh, first and foremost, again, I'll start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose true name is Yahweh. And I'll do so in the name of his beloved son, Yahweh who the world calls Jesus Christ. And um, like I mentioned earlier, the topic for tonight is, will there really be salvation and good news for the nations? And, you know, this is a, a very important topic and, and, and very controversial topic among our people, you know, because a lot of us, we have different doctrines and stances on this particular topic. And... You know, this is one of the most argued topics and points, you know, amongst members in Christianity and the Israelite community, right? But, you know, tonight through the spirit and power of the Most High, we'll show what the Bible truly says regarding this topic. And for the record to answer the question, the answer is yes. All right, so we're going to go throughout the scriptures to, to show what the Bible says, right? So first, we're going to show salvation or people being saved in the Bible, and we're going to go into the definition. But first, we're going to start with, let me get my screen shared. We're going to start with Isaiah 45. We 
we're going to start with Isaiah 45 and 14. God. And uh, you can read down to 17. God. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee. In chains they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed, and also confounded, all of them. They shall go to confusion together, that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. Come, come, beautiful reading. So dealing with verse 14, the text is saying that Egypt, Ethiopia, and the Sabians are going to be subjected to us along with their resources and wealth. And they will acknowledge us as the most highest people. And they will acknowledge Yahweh as the true God, right? And, and in verse 15, it says, Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself. And, and what's meant by this is that the Most High conceals himself and his ways. Like you even read, read it like that in different translations, right? But real quick, just to grab a quick precept, let's go to the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 55. You can read verse 6 through 7. Khan, this is Isaiah. Chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while ye while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Come. So in this particular passage, it speaks about how the Most High is going to have mercy and allow his people to repent. And then pardon them, you know, even though we didn't do what you know we were supposed to do, you know. So, you know, this is important because you know the average person, you know, they wouldn't exude this this type of mercy, you know. But Yahweh, as we read in the scriptures, like in Exodus, I believe, um, maybe may the thirty third chapter or something like that, it speaks about how he, how he's uh, slow to wrath and and he's long suffering, right? But you know, the Most High, he exudes this type of mercy. And, you know, this is beyond our, our comprehension, right? But you can continue on. You can read verse 8 on down to 9. In the same chapter, uh, chapter 55? Con. Con. This is Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Come. So the Most High's ways are higher than our ways and they're deeper than our ways. Right. You know, because, you know, for a lot of human beings, it's hard to rationalize the amount of mercy that Yahweh has. You know, but the Most High understands everything and he has his reasons. Right. There are some things, you know, that we just we can't, you know, we don't fathom or really take into account what the Most High does. Right. And just to um, want to grab something else. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 29, verse 29. Con, this is Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Mm. Con, so, so the secret things belong to the Most High. Right. You know, so there are things that many people won't understand, you know, but there are things that, you know, the most high he may allow us, you know, to comprehend and get. But, you know, in this particular way, he conceals himself, you know, because there's always going to be something, you know, that a, a lot of people, they're just not going to be able to grasp or comprehend. Right. So in this particular way, the most high he conceals himself or he hides himself. Right. But let's jump back to Isaiah. Um, 45. And if you got any points, brother, you can, of course, you can jump in. Con, con, nothing right now, brother. And uh, you said Isaiah 45, starting at which verse? 
Uh, you can read uh, 16. Con. This is Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 16. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. Con. So, so the heathen aforementioned, you know, they're going to be confounded, you know, and, and them that make idols, they're going to be in confusion. Right. So we, we can continue on. Right. Read verse 17, because verse 16 is talking about the heathen. But verse 17 is going to talk about us. So you can read verse 17. Con. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end con con so the israelites they're going to be saved you know with an everlasting salvation and it's going to be a world or an age without end meaning israel you know is saved from their condition of exile and they'll be placed in a state of rest you know and this rest will be permanent it's not going to be you know for 40 years or 60 years or something like that but it's going to be a, a perpetual um period or age of rest right because even when you go into that word for uh for world that's dealing with you know um a um, a perpetual amount of time you know or an everlasting time right so real quick right i want to go into this word for uh let's see let's go into the word for salvation because i think it's very important to look at words and definitions in us, um, you know, if we're all biblical scholars and a biblical scholar is somebody that, you know, diligently studies the text, we have to be familiar with what the word. I don't know if it's my end or you in the matrix right now. So lucky like y'all um brother probably running into some connection issues give him a couple minutes couple seconds be right back Salakia, I was I was talking on mute, <laughs> and I said, "Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into a point that the brother made in Isaiah 45, verses 16 and 17. And so in verse 16 it says, "They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols." And we know this was talking about the Gentiles. So when it gets to verse 17, it starts to talk about Israel. It says, "But Israel." shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. And so when you look at verse 17 saying that Israel is not going to be confounded or ashamed, that, you know, it's making a direct contrast to verse 16 where it talks about the Gentiles being ashamed or confounded. And in verse 17, verse 17 is saying that Israel is going to be saved with an everlasting salvation. So for when people try to make the argument or they ask you the question, like, um, so is the only people getting eternal life Israelites? This is a perfect verse. These are two perfect verses to go to, go to, to see the direct contrast of what the most high God has promised. 
the Gentiles will be ashamed and also confounded. All of them, they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. It says in verse 17, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded or without end. So the ashamed, being ashamed and being confounded, it, it goes hand in hand with not being able to receive uh, eternal salvation or like a um having eternal life. This is not saying that there won't be Gentiles in the kingdom of God. But I'm going to uh, pass it back over to Aaron because he's back. And we had a little silence for a minute because I, I was sitting here talking on mute. <laughs> but, yeah, you got it. <laughs> hey, man, I, I was sitting there. I, I was talking good, too, man. I, I Like, I don't know how long I was off for Salaki. Um, but uh, what, what's what's the last thing that you heard of? Uh, so I think we was we was definitely in Isaiah 45, and you was at verse 16 to 17. So I kind of picked up. And show the direct contrast of verse 16 and 17. God. And so yeah, you you were right there. <laughs> God, God, absolutely. God. Um, did I did, did y'all see me going to the world for salvation? Nah, because you was in the matrix. Okay, and I, okay. I seen it, I thought it was just my end, but nah. Okay. Okay, the water, con. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. I'll go through it one more time. <laughs> God. God, so I care for that. Time, but um, real quick, we're gonna go into the word for uh for salvation, right? Time. It, it is um Strong's H eighty six sixty eight um Tashawaya or uh Teshua. and when we look at the biblical usage, it's salvation, deliverance, and it's more the same for the definition deliverance help safety but when we jump down to um brown driver bricks which is a good tool um you can find this in a blue letter and you can find it on um uh bible hub as well um, when we look at the first um outline it says deliverance usually by god through human agency especially from oppression um when we jump down to the usage that's around Isaiah 45 and 17, it literally says of national deliverance from exile, right? So, you know, essentially what, what we can see right here is that, you know, Israel is going to be delivered, you know, from a, a national exile, right? They're going to be um, saved out of all of these places that they're scattered to because if you understand the, the biblical definition for captivity, it means to be exiled or banished from, from the homeland, right? Even when you look in, um, like at Deuteronomy 28, when it speaks about us being in captivity, you look at the Hebrew word there, it says to be exiled, you know? So, you know, this particular salvation that's being explained in Isaiah 45, is talking about us being delivered from all over the, you know, all over the, the earth, so to speak, right? But, you know, just to continue on, you know, re you know, regarding the understanding of salvation, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 67. And you can read down to uh, 68. Con. This is Luke, chapter 1, verses 67 and 68. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Come. So John the Baptist's father, uh, Zechariah, um, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied and spoke of the redemption of the people of Israel. You know, so this is the subject matter right here in this in this particular passage. All right. So let's jump down uh, to verse sixty nine, and you can read all the way down to seventy one. Come. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Okay. okay. So in verse 69, it says he raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of David. And that horn 
is in reference to the messianic figure, which would later be revealed to be Yahweh, the son of David, you know, also the son of Joseph, right? So now, real quick, let's look at this word for salvation, because this is very important. Just looking into words, right? So the word right here, the inflection would be uh uh so uh, soterias and the root would be um soteria right and in the study of soteriology um it just means the study of salvation right that's where we get this is the greek word that we get that word from but um you know it's g 4991 and when you look here at the biblical usage, it says deliverance, preservation. Um, you know, we see of messianic salvation. Um, and we see, you know, all of this future salvation, etc. Right. And but also it says deliverance from molestation of enemies. You know, so you know what basically what that's going into is it's speaking to the fact that by the hand of Yahweh Shai. You know, the other nations that have been oppressing us won't be able to harass us or molest us in this context, you know, after we receive this particular salvation by the way of the Messiah. Right. So let's continue on. And real quick, one more time. Can you read verses 70 through 71? Con. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Okay. So, you know, we see that the Most High, he's gonna use the Messiah to save the nation of Israel. And we know that the prophets spoke of this in ancient time. And they spoke of us being saved from our enemies. And that word for saved in verse 71 is the same word that's in verse 69, you know, soteria, right? You know, but this time, it mentions in the verse that we'll be saved from our enemies, right? So, you know, this is continuing the theme of Israel being saved and, and gathered from, you know, the places that they're exiled and, you know, being oppressed at, right? So let's jump down to verse 74 and read down to 75. Okay. This is verse 74 and verse 75, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Okay. So this reinforces the point that we'd be delivered from our enemies, you know, so that we could serve the most high without fear and in righteousness all the days of our life. Now, you know, that's what the Bible describes it describes as salvation for the nation of Israel. And that's that's clear throughout the scriptures. There's you know, there's definitely, you know, a stratification and a separation of, um, you know, salvation. You know, we see different types and levels of salvation shown throughout the scriptures. And honestly speaking, that's a totally different lesson, you know, because that's we have to jump deep into that. Right. But we'll touch on it a little bit. But, you know, that's not the particular topic. Right. But jumping back to the topic of Gentile salvation. Um, you know, let's 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 move on, right? Because remember, the name of the topic is "Will there really be salvation and good news for the nations?" All right. So let's read what the Bible says about the nations being saved. And and real quick, a side note, just to you know, you know, throw this out there, just in case no one knows, um, it's very important to understand that the Israelites being saved and inheriting the kingdom means that they are given dominion and rulership over the other nations you know and of course this will be under the authority of the most high and his son you know but with that being said let's show how this is salvation and good news for the gentiles that are going to be preserved right let's jump to let's go to the book of isaiah chapter 49 um, and you can read um verses one on down to three. Con. This is Isaiah 49, verses one through three. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. 
from the bowels of my mother have he made mention of my name and he have made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand have he hid me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver have he hid me and said unto me thou art my servant o israel in whom i will be glorified God. so right here we see that isaiah he was called before he was born you know to be a servant of the most high and in verse three we see how isaiah's task and purpose is linked to the nation of israel as a whole you know just you know you know how we were chosen you know beforehand you know to be a servant of the most high you know it's the same thing you know with isaiah he was chosen to be a servant of the most high to bring the most high glory right but let's continue on you can read verse four Con. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. Con. So Isaiah says he feels, and this is just essentially what he's saying. He's saying he feels as if his labor was in vain. You know, and you'll see this theme with many of the prophets, you know, and the elect men of the Lord, you know, when you read throughout the scriptures. You know, but he also says that his judgment and his work is with Yahweh. You know, meaning he'll, you know, he's gonna do the work and let Yahweh deal with the rest. You know, because his job and just like you know many of the prophets and the elect men of the Lord and things of that of that sort, his job is only to serve the Most High. You know, and again, that's the spirit we have to move in. You know, because regardless of who hears or who doesn't hear. You know who understands or you know who doesn't understand we have to do the work and trust the most high with the rest right but let's jump down to verse five Con. this is verse five in isaiah 49 and now saith the lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant to bring jacob again to him though israel be not gathered yet shall i be glorious in the eyes of yahweh and my god shall be my strength Con. So Isaiah was made um, to call Israel to repentance toward the Most High. And though you know they, they didn't hearken to Isaiah, he'll be glorious in the eyes of the Most High. And that's because he obeyed what the Lord you know, commanded him and what he commissioned him to do. Right. Let, but let's jump down to verse six. It's the point. Con. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for light to the Gentiles, that mm. thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. God. And hey, the brother hurt, he, he can attest to this. This is um this is one of them verses that it'll send certain brothers into a frenzy. You know, they'll they'll start trying to figure out certain ways to to kind of you know change this verse. To say something else because they don't truly understand what it's getting at but God. you know the, it's the text is very simple right so the most high he said it's a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribe of jacob in the preserved of israel you know meaning them that remain of israel you know so this covers the 144 you know the twelve thousand out of each tribe and also the one third as a collective all of them that are going to remain or be um preserved right you know but he goes on to say that i will also give thee talking about the servants of the most high you know under the direction of your you know which would include the elect men of israel you know they'll be given for a light to the gentiles that we may be salvation unto the end of the earth right so let's look at real quick let's look at what it means to be a light you know, let's go into the hebrew word for light right here Not the first light, but the second one. Because again, like, like I always mention, it's very important to go into these words. Um, and the inflection would be uh, la or or la awar. Um, root would be awar H216. And let's. We see light, um, light of life, light of instruction. That's very important. 
definition, it just says light illumination. But let's jump down to the Brown Driver Briggs. And when we look now here, we see um, number nine. It says light of instruction. And then we see it even puts a precept. It says Proverbs 6 and 23, the commandment is a lamp and an uh, and instruction of, of a light, right? Or of light. It's like instruction, a, a light. And then um, Isaiah 42, 6, Isaiah 49, 6, right? You know, so the commandment is a lamp and instruction of light. You know, but, you know, then we see right here, as it said, messianic servant. So this is going to be Yahweh and the elect men under Yahweh Shai, right? You know, because us, you know, our role is going to be to instruct the nations in the ways of the Most High. Right, and just real quick to prove that point, let's go to the book of Isaiah, second chapter. And you can read. And before Come. you go there, I, mm -hmm. um, I just want to touch on something in Isaiah 49. Come. Uh, the, the next verse, verse 7, mm -hmm. it says, Thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despises. So we know who he's talking to. He's talking to the Israelites who who are despised among the nations. It said to him whom the nation abhor to a servant of rulers. And we know Israel serves the rulers of this, you know, of this world. It says, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. And this goes right along with verse six, what the brother was pointing, pointing out you know how brothers kind of get confounded by verse six saying what it says about us being a light to the Gentiles in this time. And this time that we're speaking of would be, you know, around the time of the kingdom. And nice. so verse seven just kind of helps bring it home because it goes right along with the end that says that thou mayest be a salvation into the end of the earth. He's given us a light for the Gentiles. So this is why the king shall see and arise. The princes will worship because of the lord that is faithful so they're able to see the most high god working on us and in us and they can't do nothing but bow their knee but that's just it's, it's a beautiful way that verse six goes with verse seven Con, absolutely the water Con. Con, beautiful point and what was that uh book in chapter Con, um book and chapter was uh isaiah two and uh you can read just uh one and two right now Con. It says the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Okay. So it says it shall come to pass that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. You know, so first let's understand that this particular mountain is Israel and Yahweh's house is the temple, you know, which within Israel or is within Israel and specifically, you know, Levi, the serv you know, they're the servants of Yahweh's house, right? You know, but it goes on to say that this mount is going to be established above everyone else, you know, and the nations, you know, which are the other mountains, they're going to flow into it. All right, so let's continue on. You can read verse three. Come, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion, Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Come, so the nations that are going to flow into the mountain, you know, which is Israel, you know, they're going to say, let us go up to the mount of the most high and we'll be taught of his ways you know and how to walk in his paths and they'll do this because the law is going to go forth from zion and the word of the most high from jerusalem you know meaning the israelites they're going to be teaching the standard that's found in the word of the most high you know to the other nations that are saved or preserved you know after of course the destruction that comes you know after these days because we know that a lot of people are going to be destroyed by the most high at the hand of Yahweh and elect men right 
So just to kind of show that in scripture, let's go to the book of Numbers, the 24th chapter. Okay. And you can read um, verse 17. This is Numbers 24, verse 17. <clears throat> I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Shep. Con, con. So this is a prophecy, you know, of the star that shall come out of Jacob and a ruler out of Israel, right? And when you go into that word for star, you know, it's in reference to a messianic figure, right? So a messianic figure is going to smite or shatter the corners of Moab, you know, meaning the territory, the temple, and things like that within the territory of Moab. You know, and, and the authority of Moab is going to be destroyed, you know, by this particular star. And we understand, of course, that this is Yahweh Shah. Now, a lot of people, when we look at, you know, the, the latter clause of this verse, a lot of people, when they see it says, um, and destroy the children of Sheth, you know, a lot of them, they'll say, oh, well, that's that's talking about Seth, you know, Adam's son, right? But when you jump into the Hebrew, and we, we can do it right now, this is actually... And and I, I came across this maybe a few years ago, but when you look at the Hebrew right here for the word chef, is the Hebrew word shaf, right? Strong's H eighty three fifty one. And let's look at it. It says um, seed of body, um, buttocks, and then it says uh, tumult, right? But let's look at the brown driver bricks. This is a pretty helpful tool it says sons of battle right so real quick i want to touch on this part um this part concerning tomo right this is very important let's go to the book of psalm because i'm sure a lot of brothers they they might have recognized that verbiage of tomo right let's go to the book of psalm chapter 83 and you can read verses one to two time this is psalm 83 verses one and two a song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and mm -hmm. they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Con. So we see the enemies of the Most High make a tumult, which is, you know, basically when you go into it, it's an uproar or a uproar or a stir. You know, and these enemies, you know, when you continue to read throughout the chapter, I'm not going to go into it tonight. But when you continue to read, it includes different nations, you know, the other nations, you know, Edom, Ishmael, Moab, etc. Right. So, again, I want to address the sons of battle part because that's very important. Right. And, and then, you know, after we get through that, we can jump back to Isaiah 49. Right. Because, you know, I, I do I do want to make sure I cover cover all the bases right but real quick let's go to the book of joel because we're talking about the sons of battle go to joel chapter three and you can read verses one to two con this is joel chapter three verses one and two for behold in those days and in that time when i shall bring again the captivity of judah and jerusalem i will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Mm. God, that's powerful. So, you know, when we read, you know, uh, it's like when, when, you know, when we're freed from, you know, exile, the Most High is going to gather all the nations and judge them. And, and when you continue to read in this chapter, it speaks about how the nations they're gonna have to get ready for war, you know. So this is where you know uh, a lot of destruction is gonna take place, you know, a lot of the, the destruction of the heathen, right? But you know, after this point, you know, us as the Israelites, you know, we're gonna be a light to the heathen that remain and weren't destroyed at this particular event, right? So you know, if you if you don't got any points, we could jump back to uh, Isaiah forty nine. Kind of, you could read um, Isaiah 49 and 6 one more time. 
This is Isaiah 49 and verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Okay. So the latter clause, when it says that thou may be my salvation to the end of the earth, you know, um, you know, I kind of want to go into that because, you know, being salvation of the most high to the end of the earth, that encompasses or, or, or mainly encompasses us teaching the most high's ways, you know, which, would, you know, would include the law, statutes and commandments, you know, to the rest of the heathen, you know, that remain or were preserved. Right. And we'll do this for the cause of the earth being restored. Right. But. Real quick, let's jump to the book of Psalm 67 because this is going to touch on these particular points. So let's go to Psalm 67. And you can read verse 1 on down to 2. Con. To the chief musician on Niganoth, a psalm or song. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Salah that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Mm. I, I can hear the song in it too. <laughs> <laughs> God. God, so so it said that thy way, you know, meaning God's way may be known on the earth, you know, which is his saving health. You know, and if we read throughout the scriptures, You'll see that the way of the most high is the commandments, you know, and his commandments, they bring life. Right. And a little bit earlier, um, we read a little bit of Proverbs 6 and 23, but let's let's read the verse one more time. Right. And uh, you can get Proverbs 6 and 23. God, this is Proverbs 6 in verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Come. Huh. So it says the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You know, and and when these ways are made known, the earth is going to be a better place. You know, because the issues that we deal with regarding you know nature, wildlife, you know crime, you know etc. You know. These things are going to be a thing of the past once the law of God is implemented as the standard on the earth, right? But until then, you know, until that time comes, you know, the earth and everyone within, you know, that we're going to have to, you know, continuously deal with solving these issues and dealing with these things, All right? But real quick, let's jump to the book of Romans 8 because it's going to expound on this. And, um, and I, if you got any points, you could jump in. No, not yet. Romans 8 in uh, verse 18 down to 19. Con. This is Romans chapter 8, verses 18 and 19. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Con. Con. So the apostle Paul said, the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Right. And, and the us right there is referring to the Israelites, you know, who received the kingdom. You know, but something he makes mention of is the present sufferings, you know, which means evil in this particular context. You know, so the present evil that's in this time isn't to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us and it'll be revealed in us by the most high placing us on high above the nations so that the righteous rulership can reign you know throughout the entire earth right and and as um i think yeah i see the brother he said sickness disease violence up until that day and we know that the earth is plagued with all of these things you know it's, it's you know you you got you know moab eating god knows what you know you got all of the you know a, a lot of the prominent animals going extinct you know like we're dealing with all of these things and so we can see that the whole you know the whole earth 
is is desperately awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God, right? You know, so that was a beautiful point that the brother uh, put up in there. But real quick, just to kind of expound, let's go to the book of Proverbs. Um, go to the book of Proverbs, chapter twenty nine. You can read verse two. Con, this is Proverbs chapter twenty nine and verse two. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Okay. You know, so we, we see that when the righteous rule, you know, there's peace, you know, and it's rejoicing. But when the wicked rule, it's mourning, you know, it's chaos, you know, it's war, it's all of these things, right? You know, it's, it's hell breaking loose, right? So let's jump back to Psalm 67. Con. Con, you Psalm can read a. Yeah, Con, and you can read verses three through four. Con. This is Psalm 67, verses three and four. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Salah. Con. So. You know, essentially speaking, you know, the earth is going to be a better place, you know, for everyone once the most high places his chosen people, which is Israel, back on high above all of the nations. Right. You know, and because through them, you know, righteous judgment is going to be rendered. The earth is going to be restored. Right. You know, but, you know, to kind of conclude, you know, again, the question that was stated at the beginning you know, and also the topic was, will there really be salvation and good news for the nations? You know, the answer according to the Bible would be yes. You know, because righteous, of, you know, righteous and and um, holy and God fearing rulership is going to be an authority, right? So, um, you know, with that, I'm gonna pass it off to the brother Hurt, and I'm gonna end it off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose true name is Yahweh. And um, and I pass it back to you, brother. Kind, kind, beautiful uh lesson, brother. Um, I got one precept. I'm gonna go to Leviticus 25 and verses 44 through 46. And um, I'll read it. It says, Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy. And of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. And just bringing this precept out because um, some people won't, you know, they don't they don't hold to the stance of there's going to be a hierarchy. Like there's going to be rulers that are Israelites. There's also going to be subjects in the kingdom who are Israelites. But those subjects will actually have servants who serve them. And this just goes to show that those servants cannot possibly be other Israelites, because this was already a provision that the Most High had, and it was for them, like verse 46 says, to inherit them for a possession, and they shall be your bondmen forever. But it says, over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. And that's pretty much it. And uh, Khan, Khan again, brother, beautiful lesson, beautiful lesson. All praises. And if you got anything else, you you welcome to the floor, or if not, you can close it out. Kind, kind. Um, yeah, I don't got too much else. Just um, like like I would just admonish everyone to make sure you like the video, make sure you share, and um, and uh, that'll be everything. But you know, I can close it out. There'll be nothing else. We'll close it out with um number six and twenty-four on down. Yeah, I will bless thee and keep thee. Yeah, I will make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 
Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And with that, I'll say Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, family. Forever is Edomite. You are not just an Edomite in this life. You're an Edomite in the next life. In the next life. You will never be an Edomite. This is what the Bible says. You will never be an Israelite. I will never be an Israelite. You will never be an Israelite. When this kingdom come and this will be done, I know vengeance is the Lord's. They gon' pay for what they done. When this kingdom come and this will be done, I know vengeance is the Lord's. They gon' pay for what they done. That's on nobody wanna face the truth about how we really got here. Want us to forget about slavery like it never happened. But them slaves just important. A key connection to our past. Redo the round number 28 to help you feel what I'm saying. We were forced on this land, allowed by Yahweh's hand, but it was all for a purpose. Part of a bigger plan. They still talk about the Holocaust, ignore our mass genocide. We ain't been propagated again. This country built on lies. Yeah, I know y'all ain't the ones who put us in chains, but them y'all ancestors that blood still run through your veins. Bless your status in society, it's cause you reap them benefits I'm on the corners that was sold Please don't try to act ignorant like your forefathers was innocent And the issues don't concern you They've been reincarnated, your ancestors are you Look at the way that you treat us Shoot us down in the streets Throw us in cages like animals This ain't the land of the free When this kingdom come and this will be done I know vengeance is the Lord's They gon' pay for what they done When this kingdom come and this will be done is the Lord's, they gon' pay for what they done When this kingdom come, and this will be done I know vengeance is the Lord's, they gon' pay for what they done When this kingdom come, and this will be done I know vengeance is the Lord's, they gon' pay for what they done That's how self